What's up YouTube? It's Jeff the Grave Guy. Today we are at the Memorial Park Cemetery in Sedalia, Missouri. And today we're going to visit the grave of Lieutenant George Whiteman. He was among the first to die in the Pearl Harbor attack on December 7, 1941. He's also the first pilot to die in World War II, and he's also the namesake of Whiteman Air Force Base. Lastly, I want to thank my friend Paul for letting me know that George Whiteman is buried here. George Whiteman was born in Pettis County, Missouri on October 12, 1919. He was the oldest of nine brothers and sisters. After high school, he decided to attend Rolla School of, the, of Mines, where he studied chemical engineering. He decided to attend Rolla School of Mines because the armed forces told him if he attended college, he could enter the Army Air Force as an officer and uh, might possibly become a pilot. So that was his goal all along was to become a pilot. At first he was told that he was too light to even be in the Army Air Corps. The Army Air Corps was basically the name for <clears throat> the US Air Force uh, back at that time. Its name changed a few times before finally becoming the United States Air Force. Despite the discouraging remark that he was too light for the Army Air Corps, George eventually made it there anyway, earning his wings on November 15, 1940. George was supposed to begin his flying career in Martinique, which is a French island in the Caribbean, but his commander asked for six volunteers to go to Hawaii, to which George agreed. And little did George know that that would be a fateful decision. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese conducted a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. As a quick aside, I'll remind you that the whole purpose of the attack on Pearl Harbor was to try to destroy the U.S. Pacific Fleet, which would allow Japan to continue its imperial expansion in the Asia-Pacific without any interference from the United States. During the attack, Lieutenant Whiteman made his way to a Curtis P-40 Warhawk airplane and just barely lifted off the runway about 50 feet up in the air when he received heavy Japanese gunfire. He was wounded and lost control of his plane. It crashed and burned at the end of the runway where George died of his injuries. Major Charles A. King was one of the witnesses of the shooting down of Lieutenant Whiteman's plane. Major King described his view of the events that occurred on December 7th, 1941. He said that the first Japanese plane he saw swooped low and strafed some of the men who were swimming in the water. As the men rushed to report the incident, orders were given to load the Curtis P-40 Warhawks with ammunition to disperse the Japanese planes. As the planes were being loaded, 12 Japanese Zeros strafed the airfield. Lieutenant Whiteman was the first to his plane hurrying so fast that he actually neglected to put on his flying suit equipment. He took off so fast that the men loading the guns on his plane didn't have time to replace the gun cowlings. Two Japanese planes spotted Whiteman taking off and they strafed him and his plane all the way down the runway. As his plane lifted off, Two more Japanese planes attacked head-on, causing Lieutenant Whiteman's plane to catch fire in mid-air. He tried to make a belly landing on the beach, but it resulted in a flaming crash which killed him. A telegram was sent to Lieutenant Whiteman's family which read, Second Lieutenant George A. Whiteman, killed in action this date. Further information will reach you from War Department, Washington. Sincere sincere sympathy. 
They also received a second telegram which further confirmed his death. Upon hearing the news of her son's passing, George's mom said, it's hard to believe there might have been a mix up. It all happened so quickly. There's nothing we can do but wait for further news from Washington. It might have happened anytime, anywhere. We've got to sacrifice loved ones if we want to win this war. She then handed the reporter a photo of George in his airplane with the words, lucky, lucky me, written on the side. For his gallantry that day, Lieutenant Whiteman was posthumously awarded the Silver Star, the Purple Heart, the American Defense Medal with a Foreign Service Clasp, the American Campaign Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal with one bronze star, and the World War II Victory Medal. On August 24, 1955, 14 years after Whiteman's death, Air Force Chief of Staff General Nathan F. Twinning informed Whiteman's mother that the recently reopened Sedalia Air Force Base would be renamed Whiteman Air Force Base in a tribute to her son. The dedication and the renaming ceremony took place on December 3, 1955. Here we are at George's grave. You can see that there's a flagpole installed right here. And that's because every year they, uh, individuals gather in a memorial service to honor Lieutenant Whiteman. The service is attended by security forces, his descendants, his family members, and veterans. I'm amazed that George didn't seem to think twice before springing into action that day. His instinct was to defend his country no matter what was in front of him. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a person more courageous than George Whiteman was on December 7th, 1941. While George Whiteman may be gone, he's certainly not forgotten. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.